Sorry, everyone. Um, you know, I didn't immediately record after the game yesterday. In truth, I ended up taking a little bit of a nap. I had to rewatch the game. I saw circumstances. You know what? Let's get those circumstances out of the way. It's completely inappropriate, in my opinion, to say the very least. There are a bunch of adjectives that I could use to describe what took place. And I'm just wondering, from that guy's standpoint, what are you doing? You know, the arena start to open up. You spent your hard-earned money. Did you really spend your money on a ticket? Like, literally, front row type of ticket. To throw popcorn on Russell Westbrook. <laughs> like, you'll never be able to go to another Sixer game again. You'll never be able to go to any Wells Fargo game again. So, it's like, with, with all that whipping, just to throw popcorn on Russell Westbrook. Really? And then, secondly, and more importantly... It was just another black eye on Philadelphia Sports. Now, credit to the fans in the stands who were quick to point out that dude. And, you know, just completely get him out of there. Props to the fans for that. But I feel like, you know, Doc Rivers came out about a similar situation a couple of days ago. You know, talking about Ben Simmons, who had a phenomenal game. And once again, how did this game happen with the Wizards? He's hanging around with him, you know, and to their credit, they are doing a better job finding him hanging around with him, but he's also doing a better job flashing to the rim. He's a 6'10 big man, not a guard, and he's finally starting to play like a 6'10 big man who happened to be able to drive to the rim. But he's a big, and he's playing big, you know, Couple games after the 15 rebounds, he gives me nine. There you go. You should be a double figure rebounder. You're six ten. Enough of the fine cute crap. You're big, you're powerful, you're strong. You're a big man. And it's okay. They're Hall of Fame big men. Big men should be celebrated more. They are celebrated more. And you would be the most popular big man. Think about it. You're the perfect combination of big and athletic. You're the best of both worlds. You're bigger and stronger than everybody, you're more athletic than everybody. So, once this becomes you, and you win multiple championships with Philadelphia, then you'll get the reputation, and you'll get the claps that you rightfully deserve, and then we're going to look at your career differently, as opposed to 14, 7, and 7, 15, 8, and 8, as cute. Quit the cute crap. You could be elite at this game. Not just cute, not just pretty good, not just floor game. You have a chance to be special. I still can't believe that I'm saying that, you know, age 25. Age 25, year 5, and I literally, you know, it's kind of ironic. Because as I said, I took a nap, right? I posted the pregame live, if you remember, and I said... I give up on it. I'm like, this version of Ben is the best version of him. You give me 15 rebounds, 15 assists, better offensive of Draymond Green, you know? And I was like, okay, I give up. So I take a little nap, wake up at about 8.30, tune in, and the guy giving you 22, 9, and 8. And I'm like, really? Seriously? I just got done saying I accept you for who you are. And then you reel me back in with another performance that says, yes, you can be great. And yes, floor game is not your ceiling. I I'll never understand. <laughs> you know, shout out to DJ Eastwood. He says something like, it's like Bill Charlie. You don't know what you're going to get. And that's exactly right. I don't know what I'm going to get. Am I going to get big, tall, passer guy? Or am I going to get the guy that everyone thinks? could be a legend at this game. I don't know what I'm going to get. Am I going to get legend Ben Simmons or am I going to get pretty good, really solid player Ben Simmons? And I think everybody wants the legend Ben Simmons because he's a fiend doc. 
Legend Ben Simmons can still do all the things that pretty good Ben Simmons can do. Legend Ben Simmons can still make plays for others. Legend Ben Simmons can still rebound the ball. And Legend Ben Simmons can score a bit. Just a bit, you know, trying to avoid just a bit. So Ben Simmons was absolutely phenomenal. Joel Embiid had a low-key great game, and for Joel Embiid's standards, it's not going to show up on the scoreboard, but, you know, I want to give some props to Doc Rivers while I talk about what Joel Embiid did in this game, because we all remember last year, I think every six of them remember last year, I wasn't doing the channel then, but, you know, if you know my monkey, a superhero 18, I, I'm on DJ's channel, I'm on Fully Take With RB, and, and I was talking like, when we were all like, this feels dead. First of all, this feels dead, and then secondly, we wanted Brett Brown fired. Oh, God, did we want that guy fired. If he wasn't fired, I seriously would have considered quitting my six of fandom. Literally, that's how it felt. It felt like if this guy, it, it like... <laughs> I came up with a saying, actually, today, and now that I bring this up, I wasn't sure if I was going to say this, um, until we won a championship, but this segment's going to do it perfectly, so I'm just going to say, Brett Brown was the Bernie Madoff of coaching, the Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme, that's what that was, the dude sitting there for eight years, <laughs> no one gives a damn but the first four. You drop Embiid, a couple of failed job picks later, you get Simmons, and my thought was, when we first drafted Ben Simmons, literally, I was thinking to myself, you got a 6'10", versatile, all-NBA weapon, you got a 7'2", and this is what I said before he really took this leap, 7'2", Chris Kamen with deep bench. And I don't think that's a slight, Chris Kamen was a very good center, you know, in the prime of his day. And this is a young 21-year-old me at the time, 22-year-old me at the time. Chris Kamen with defense would be a damn good center. You know, 18, 10, a block and a half a game, that's pretty good. No one knew that John B would be the best big man possibly in the last 25 years, okay? No one knew that. But at the time, I'm like, Chris Kamen with defense, versatile all-NBA Ben Simmons, that should be enough to make you a perennial contender. And we all know what we got. Second round and first round exits. Huh? You know, we all knew instinctively. And I knew the more I got into basketball, specific plays, how things can be run. We all knew that something wrong was happening here. That you weren't meeting your full potential. And then some of these other guys were like, oh, we're winning for the games. I'm like, oh, give the shit. And that's what Milwaukee did. You know, Milwaukee's like, well, we've been number one all these years. Who cares? Let's figure out how we're going to play our best in the playoffs. And now they're absolutely obliterating the Miami Heat. <laughs> so who cares? Who really cares that you got 50 wins, that you live through the process, yada, yada, yada. Who gives a shit if your coaching sucks? Who really cares? And I say that because one of the things that we all thought was Jerome and Ben can't play together. Jerome and Ben can't play together. Actually, we just had a snake oil salesman who really couldn't coach. And I say that because Jerome and Ben has become so much better in passing in one offseason than in the last three or four. And there's this one play. And in particular, Doc would talk about it and Joel would talk about it, that they planned this before the game. They knew that the Wizards were going to come out of them with double teams. So they knew ahead of time, okay, this is what we can expect. So let's look for this. That never would have happened. No, that did never happen at all, period. Not, it wouldn't have. It never did happen in the clown era. In the 1999 uh, what well, I'm most focused on is putting out open in the paint with Joel and me. That makes the most sense in space. <laughs> that never happened. But in this playoff, Doc is like, hey, Joe, heads up. They're going to double you a lot more in game two. 
And Joel was like, okay, I'm going to pass the ball out. And that's what he did. That's great coaching. That's receptivity to that coaching. And then it's execution. There was this one play where the double team came from the baseline. Joel Embiid is dribbling the ball. And guess what? He's dribbling the ball to invite this defender so that he could kick it out to Seth Curry on the corner. Unfucking believable. The player development that Jerome Beat has had in this season, and this goes to the whole roster, we think about it. You know, we're going to talk about player development. Tyree Schmaxi, you know, it, it was amazing. I, when I looked at him, I'm like, how did he drop the Toronto one to begin with? But it's one thing to get an incredibly young, talented player. It's another thing entirely to groom that player. Arguably should have more minutes. You know, you had him out of his rotation. Then you bring him back. And he's so much of a better player. A lot of it is to his own credit. You know, I love hearing the stories about Tyreek Maxey and seeing the work in the gym that Tyreek Maxey clearly put in. So a lot of that credit goes to him. But some of that credit, obviously, should go to the guy. He wasn't even among the top three in Coach of the Year. And that is just so disrespectful. You know, if you were going to go for a one-year turnaround based on just wins alone, why didn't you go on Quinn Snyder on the Jazz? It, to me, it actually takes votes away that the Suns go and get Chris Paul. It's Chris freaking Paul! Yeah! I would imagine putting Chris Paul next to Devin Booker should result in getting a lot of wins. I would like to assume that. Now, I'm not dismissing Monty's good coaching because he had been a good coach in this league before. He's coached Chris Paul before. He's been familiar with Chris Paul before. So Monty is a damn good head coach. That's not the problem. The problem is this. That Phoenix team, and it won eight games before the bubble. Look, that Phoenix team... It already had foundational pieces. Coach of the year. You went from six. Six. To first. You were the best team in the conference this year. After coming off of last year. With a 6-10 arbitrage of contract. No youth. No nothing. What Doc Rivers did in eight months. I'm sorry. The definition of coach of the year. Is coach of the year. Not I acquired Chris Paul. So with all due respect to Monty, and even with all due respect to Quinn, what has happened here did not happen anywhere else in the NBA. It didn't. And, you know, it's kind of a, now Doc doesn't care, of course. He, he's beyond that. He always won one with it. You know, the magic. He's a humble dude. But from a obvious standpoint, I, I just have grievance with this whole award process. You know, because everyone's like, games miss. Fuck games miss. Jokic is not a better basketball player than Jerome B. End of story. That's the bottom line. Jokic is very good. But I would never trade him beat for Jokic. But I guarantee you, if a Nugget fan could say it in confidence, no public disclosure, Nugget fans would be like, yeah, I would trade Jokic for him But there is no Philly fan on the face of the earth that would say the opposite. Because Jokic can't defend him. Bottom line, Embiid is better than Jokic. Embiid should ideally be the MVP, but I accept even that. Okay, fine. Jokic is the MVP. When Kevin O'Connor seriously said, and you can look at the video that I posted, that you're not going to put Jerome Embiid all first team NBA to assure that the Owen B, Bam Adebayo, gets a Supermax one day, that was the last straw. That was insulting. That was seriously insulting to me. To read that, I'm concerned about Bam Adebayo getting a max contract. I'm concerned about Clint Capella getting a max contract. Are you kidding me? Those guys, Clint Capella and Bam Adebayo, guess what? Kevin O'Connor, guess what? They should have paid better. They should have played better to earn that vote. They should have played better. There was no reason to take a top five player in the NBA and put him on the second team so that Bam Adebayo and Kid Kabbalah could get paid. As I said in the Twitter post. What are you, their agent? 
Seriously, are you are you click about an agent? Are you working in their agency? Are you working for Bam Out of Bottle Agency? Or are you working for them? Do you have a friend, a brother, a cousin, whoever is working for them and you want to make sure they get a slice of the chat? I'm just trying to conceive how even if you believe that Yogi is a better center, that means that Joe will be the second best center in the NBA. I'm struggling to conceive how a top five player in the sport cannot be awarded. I'm struggling to conceive that. And you know what it says? It says, Mr. O'Connor, it says that the media is not qualified. You're not. The media is not qualified as a whole. If you're seriously telling me top five player in the NBA is not only all NBA first team, that, that's disqualifying. And B, not being on the first team. And it isn't just Mr. O'Connor. It's every media outlet. If Embiid is not on the first team, I want the media to never vote on the all-teams again, period, end of story. The all-team is the rough equivalent of the NFL's Pro Bowl. And fans vote Pro Bowlers better than you do for the all-NBA team. If Embiid is not on the first team. I could care less about the other picks, to be honest with you. But if Embiid is not on the first team, I'm petitioning to Adam Silver that if it is related to contract performance, then that should be judged by fans, not the media, because guess what? Kevin O'Connor doesn't watch every six a game. And he sure as hell doesn't watch every Nuggets game either. I, I could tell him that. So you got these people who may barely watch 15 games, if that, actually judging who the top 20 players are in this league. My mind is, I literally have a volcano on this because I am pissed. So, for example, the defensive player of the year, Gobert or Simmons. Gobert is solid at protecting the rim, but how many points does Gobert take away? I don't know, probably six, eight, whatever. Ben Simmons in this playoffs, oh, and by the way, just to be sure, all these are regular season awards, so you're supposed to submit them before the payoffs. But you can see in the playoffs that Ben Simmons shadows everyone on the perimeter. All Gobert could do, and I'm not missing it in the terms of, you know, he's the best defensive center in the league, fine, but he's not the best defensive player. Sometimes those two could correlate. I'm not saying that Ben should have, you know, a handle on the award forever. I'm not saying that in the same way that Gobert shouldn't have a, a, a hold on the award forever. I'm just saying that it's ridiculous to look at shot blocked, etc., whatever the case may be, to give the argument that <laughs> a Gobert is anywhere close to a defender than Ben Simmons because he's not. Because, you know, he can't. He's a center who can only roam in the paint. He's just a center. And B is a, a, a Simmons, they both are, but Simmons are all everything defensively. So, if MB is not on the first team, and let's say Gobert wins the best player of the year, and Jokic wins MVP, strip the media to vote. A top five player not getting a legitimate award absolutely sickens me. It really pisses me off. I just had to go on that tangent right there. I had to. The whole award thing. 48 wins. We have the third best record in the NBA. We have the best record in the Eastern Conference. And we might not get a single credible award. I'm looking at Moy, General Manager of the Year. I'm looking for Ben Simmons, the best player of the year. I'm looking for MB or NBA first team. If none of these be happening. happen, the media should be immediately disqualified from voting. Because that means that this will be the I believe it would be the first number one seed in a conference that I get a single award. That would be disgraceful to me. And somebody say, well, it's on the second team. No one gives a shit about the second team, to be honest. Let's get real. You're 28-10 in a block and a half a game. You're on the number third team in the NBA, number one Eastern Conference. I demand first NBA team or nothing at all, period. Especially when you learn that you can actually put them in power forward. So you have no excuse. Period.
It's just... It's just ridiculous to me. Alright, back to the game. Back to the game. It's just... The award being triggered me so badly. Because our guys earned it. They did it. They played hard. They dominate defensively. And no one gives them... Even on a day-to-day -day basis, even when, you know, and we all said that it was a bunch of weak teams in the world, but it's an eight-game win streak, etc. But we won more games than our win streak than the Nets won in their win streak. We've been better than the Nets all year long. And the only thing you ever hear from those pundits is that KD, Kawhi, Harden is the greatest, most unstoppable force that the NBA has ever seen. Never minding that there was a 70B win warrior team that I swear would kick its living ass. Seriously. Even if you take KD out of the equation. Let's say you just take KD out. Draymond Green, healthy, six years younger, who can shoot three balls. Draymond Green, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, they can actually defend versus Harden and Kyrie. Who are you taking? Who are you seriously taking? The 70B win Warriors would own this Brooklyn Nets team. They would own it, and it's not even close. So please stop talking about Brooklyn as though they are the greatest juggernaut on earth. They might be able to prove that. You know, you have to beat the Bucks four hours seven times, and you have to beat Billy four hours seven times. Um, if you beat if you beat Milwaukee, and if you beat Billy four hours seven times. You know, at the very maximum, that means I have to go 8-6 and six against Milwaukee for up here. If you do that, or if you do better, then okay. You would have proven me wrong, and you you really are the greatest juggernaut to have ever existed in the game. But I did find it funny that you are this, and we're viewed as some misnomer. There's some people on Fox Sports who probably get the Eastern Conference Finals. Maybe to the NBA Finals we might lose. But most of them had the Eastern Conference Finals. And mostly everyone had Brooklyn in the Finals. It's ridiculous. It's also ridiculous considering the Brooklyn Nets lost the regular season series. It's completely asinine. I know we're better than that squad. And I want them to beat the Bucks. So we can meet them in the Eastern Conference Finals and beat them. If we meet them in the Eastern Conference Finals and we beat them, that is the ultimate, you know, that lays it right out there for all of the analysts, all of the ESPN pundits, all of them. It will be in your face. Six is four, next two, it's in your face. And then you'll just have to let the dream die. And they're the greatest free man trio. You know, like this is NBA free for free. And it's not, you know, the real National Basketball Association. It's some street ball thing. If we win four games over the net, that will end their hype. And that will also end the ludicrousy of this, that team being the greatest one of all time. I don't deny that those three are great together. I don't even deny that they're a good team. But stop talking about them as if they are even a rival or even in the conversation of what Michael Jordan accomplished or what Kobe accomplished. Literally, it was two free agent signings and a trade that you arguably lost, giving up a young Candice LeVert, Jared Allen, and a bunch of picks. So please, spare me on the Brooklyn Edge. I had a Milwaukee kick their ass or we kick their ass. I want to kick their ass personally. I think it's a better matchup, and I also want to kick their ass on a personal level. I believe that we are the team to win the championship. Especially if we play defense like this. Tyreek Maxey has been a monster. He looks like he's going to be a sixth man. He looks like he's going to be a guy that you want on the floor for 30 minutes because he can just put everything up. He can light up a court. <sighs> I'm excited. This team has so much potential to do so many great things. And it had the potential to win a championship. Six of the universe. Peace.